Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and today is a day when we right a wrong. Uh, what do I mean? Well, about a week ago I tried the puzzle on the screen. Um, it's called Tatooine Sunset by Philip Newman um, and I failed to solve it and so I had to turn off the video. Uh, I got quite far in about 20 minutes and then spent 10 minutes getting absolutely nowhere. Um, so what I had to do was come back to it later on that evening. I did manage to solve it and find a logical path. Now, if you've been following the channel, you will know that I was intending to put my solve of this puzzle up on Patreon for our patrons. Um, but, but the dastardly Mark uh, released a video the other night called How I Cheat at Sudoku, <laughs> in which he demonstrated how to solve this puzzle uh, using um, bifurcation, uh, aka guessing. Now, if you know anything about me, you'll know I absolutely detest bifurcation. <laughs> and this puzzle channel is not called Guess the Answer, so I feel obliged now to try and show you how to solve this logically, however long it might take me. I mean, even though I've solved this before, uh, I'm, I'm guessing it took me well over an hour last time to solve it. So um, at least I know the path, so it should be, it should be swifter, assuming I can remember it. Um, and of course, bif I'm, you know, I'm joking a bit about Mark Solve. Bifurcation is incredibly important. If you want to be a world-class speed solver of Sudoku, you won't get anywhere unless you're prepared to bifurcate. I never was prepared to bifurcate, so I never got anywhere. Um, now, what else do I want to mention before we get on to this? Uh, quick reminder, anyone who enjoys our cryptic crossword content, um, will probably enjoy our Instagram channel. We have a channel on Instagram where we tend to publish uh, one of the short videos every day. You can only do a one minute video on Instagram and we go through a clue of the day. Normally it's taken from the Times crossword. It's the, our favorite clue and we talk through it and how to solve it. So uh, it's quite a good way of uh, getting up to speed with how to solve those puzzles. Um, without it taking too much time. So do think about giving us a follow there. And now before we get on to this puzzle actually, let me just show you something because this is rather startling. Somebody put a comment in about this. Uh, if you go to Andrew Stewart's uh, Sudoku solver here and you put in Tatooine Sunset, you can see I've put it into this top left thing and you click Grader. Look at that. 1551. Now, I remember when I used to do the Times Fiendish and Super Fiendish puzzles, if you put those into, into this software, it would come up with a rating of around 100. So this is an absolutely monstrously difficult puzzle. Um, and it says it's tough, and I think that's just because the strategies that are needed to solve it are limited to this yellow section of strategy, so it doesn't use any of these diabolical or extreme strategies. But don't be fooled into the thinking that this is a tough puzzle. This is an absolute beast. Uh, and if you've always wondered what a swordfish was, or what an X-wing was, or even you know what they are, but you'd like more practice at them, well, let me tell you, this is the puzzle for you. Um, the way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video as usual. And um, the rules, very simple. Normal Sudoku rules apply. There's nothing else to this uh, except an awful lot of difficult logic. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, now, if I remember rightly, you can do almost nothing at the start of this puzzle. I think you can use these sevens and nines in column three and row seven to get a seven nine pair at the bottom and I think that's about it. Um, yeah I mean look I can see for example that there's a six in one of those two squares, there's a two in one of those two squares, there's a two in one of these two squares, there's a six in one of these two squares but let me tell you all of that gets you nowhere in terms of logical solve. The, the thing that we were going to need to do believe it or not to make any progress in this puzzle right from the off is to think about uh, the swordfish technique. Um, and we're going to have to think about it, believe it or not, for five different digits. I kid you not, there are five swordfishes on this initial position. Um, now, how did I discover this? Because in my 20 minutes, I did find, in fact, all five of those swordfishes, um, but it didn't help me <laughs> because there's even more to do after that. But how did I go about finding swordfishes? Well, once you stare at this grid for a while and get nowhere, you realize you're going to have to come up with something different. So what I tend to do is to start looking for digits that can either only go in one of two positions in a row or column, because that's the basis for 
techniques like the X-wing or the empty rectangle, or digits that can only go in exactly three positions in a row or column, which is the basis for the swordfish. And you can get a small clue as to which digits might be powerful here. And the first swordfish I found was actually on the fives, uh, which is one of the most useless swordfishes, but it's the first one I found. So let me talk to you about why I found this first. And it's because if we look at the positions of the fives here, they're what I call offset uh, in the sense that the, the five sitting in box eight, box eight shares an edge with box seven and box nine, but there are absolutely no fives in boxes seven and nine. There are no fives at all in boxes two and boxes five, with which obviously, you know, these or box eight sort of shares some uh, relationship. So each five is sort of sitting on its own within its group of three rows and its group of three columns. And this often can lead to restricted patterns. It's just how it, how it seems to work when you try it. Uh, so if you ever looked at our old videos on the slot machine technique by Derek Neal, you'll, you'll see a similar thing arising. So let's think about where fives can go in this grid and see if we can reveal anything clever. Now, the way to do this is literally to colour in all of the positions in the grid that can be fives, which I know sounds tedious. In fact, I've just made a mistake in trying to do it. Um, but this is what actually what we're going to have to do. You can't just look at a grid like this, or I, I, in my opinion, you can't just look at it and stare at it and go, ah, swordfish. You're going to need to highlight. I'm making a mistake in that column as well. So let's carry on. But, uh, where are the fives? Some of those positions, none of those. Those two, that one. None in, none in column eight, that one, and that one. Okay, so these are now all the positions that f fives can go in, in this Sudoku. And what we're gonna try and do is spot, let's look at columns, and let's try and spot three columns where the fives can only go in the same rows of the grid. Now, if you do this properly, look, row three, Oh, sorry, column three, column four, and column nine. Let's change the color of those ones and have a stare. So in these three columns, the fives are locked into exactly three rows, the same three rows. And this is the key point that underpins the swordfish. Now, why does it, what does it mean? Why does it underpin the swordfish? Well, we know how many, how many fives are there going to be in these three columns? That's a pretty obvious question. The answer is three, because there's going to be one in each column. But we now know that those three fives, wherever they live, they must live in exactly these three rows. So there must be, as you can't repeat a five in a row, there must be one in each of these rows. And that's the key point to remember. Once we get this pattern, if there is a five in one of these two positions and a five in one of these two positions and a five in one of these two positions, then there cannot be a five in any other position in these rows. So in row one, it is not possible for this purple square here and this purple square here to contain a five. If you don't believe me, you can even try it. Let's try and put a five there and see what happens. Well, now where does the five go in column th three? It would have to go there. Where does the five go in column nine? It would have to go here. And now where do we put a five in column four? Nowhere, there is nowhere for it to go. Um, and that is unsurprising because that's how the logic of the swordfish works. So remember, if we find the swordfish in the columns, the restriction applies to the rows. Now, I'm gonna take a short digression now to explain why I got stuck on this puzzle. Well, why I'm saying I got stuck. I really think it is why I got stuck. It's because in most puzzles, even very difficult puzzles, you'll find one swordfish and that will be enough. And so my classic way of finding swordfishes is to do exactly what I've done here. I use colors and then I would take a stare at this grid. And indeed, that's exactly what I did last week. I took a stare at the grid in this position and tried to find a restriction. Now, the difficulty with this Tatooine sunset puzzle is that in fact we need to make use concurrently of five different swordfish patterns and there just aren't enough colors to keep track of it so I ended up with a kaleidoscopic grid and it was incredibly difficult for me to fathom 
what really was going on. So I think what I'm going to do today is something a bit unusual. I'm going to change my notation so that we can try and keep track of all the swordfishes that I know are in here. So I'm going to actually use corner pencil marks. So if we look at row one, we know there can't be fives in those two squares because of the swordfish. There can't be fives in these two squares because of the swordfish. So where I put a five in a corner of a cell, that is going to mean a swordfish prevents a five from going in that cell or a swordfish prevents that digit from going in, a, in that cell. And I'm hoping that will allow me to keep track of the various swordfishes that are going on. We shall see. Um, now there's no point, for example, in me, I mean, it's clear from the swordfish, I suppose, that there couldn't be a five here, but that's irrelevant because there couldn't have been a five there because it's already one in the column anyway. So it's only really the purple squares that are interesting because they could have been fives apart from the swordfish. So let's get rid of the highlighting because we are nowhere near done with the amount of highlighting we're gonna to have to do. And let us go back and think about the next swordfish we need to find. And that I think I found was nines next because again, I looked for this offset relationship. So let's look at nines and see if that takes us anywhere forward. So again, what we have to do, and it's a little bit tedious and I'm sorry about that, but this is the way we're gonna to have to get through this puzzle. That one's not nine. Um, there we go, those can't be, those, these, these, that one, and that one, and that's it. So let's take a stare at this. Can we spot a similar relationship? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Let us look at columns two, five, and eight, and ask where the nines can go. So let's highlight them. And you can see, again, the nines are locked into exactly three rows of the grid. This time it's row one, row six, and row nine. So we know for sure we can't have any more nines in these rows. So nine gets eliminated from those two squares, these two squares, and nothing doing in the bottom row. There are no purple squares in the bottom row. So that's our swordfish on nines, and that is all it tells us. So we need to get rid of the colors again and carry on. It's, it's an incredible setup, this, by the way. To have five or five simultaneous swordfishes, well, it's incredible. It's quite evil, to be honest. Sevens, let's do sevens next. So seven can go in one of those three positions, one of those two positions, uh, one of those two one of those four, one of those three, and one of those two. And again, let's stare, let's see if we can spot it. And in fact, this one is, I think the last one was in column two, five, and eight, and this one is also in columns two, five, and eight. Look, let's change the color, and it becomes a clearer. There. Again, in these three rows, three columns, I should say, in these three columns, the, the uh, sevens this time are locked into exactly three rows of the grid. So we can eliminate seven from here, 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 and here. And that's again, that's all we can do. And you may think, ah, now we must be about to crack the puzzle. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Now let's look at twos now, I think. Now this was, this took me a while to find in the earlier video um, because I was not expecting these three twos here to lead to a swordfish and indeed as you start to highlight the twos if I remember rightly I was I almost abandoned it because it just didn't seem likely to be working but we shall see that actually it does work here um, so I'm pleased I was diligent in that respect twos can go in any of those positions See, it's this so this it seems a lot more dense in terms of the coloring than the other digits that we've tried. So I think those are the possible positions. Now let's have a look and see if we can see. Now here again, it's actually column two, five, and eight again. If we highlight the cells in question which form the swordfish, it's those again. Of course, the three columns locked into exactly the same three rows. So this time for twos, we can get, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Whatever that's done, I didn't mean to do it. I want to change that to a two. 
that to a two, that to a two, this to a two, this to a two, and lots of twos over here as well. And that's all we get from the twos. And now, finally, and this one I found later last time, but I know it's there, so I'm going to actually cover it now to just to deal with all the swordfishes, is six is also, believe it or not, a swordfish. So let's do the sixes. Bang, 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 bang. All of these can be six. All of those can be six. Can't put any sixes in here. Those two. Those three. None there. One. Right, so those I think are the colorings for the sixes. Now, where is the swordfish? Yeah, there you go. This time columns three, four, and nine. Let's highlight it just to check. There we go. Again, this digit is locked into exactly the same rows in these three columns. So we can switch our notation, switch our notation, get rid of sixes in all of the purple squares like this. Okay. And this is, this isn't quite where I got to the other day. I got a little bit further than this, but not much. So we've now got several cells that are highly restricted in terms of the swordfish stuff. And if you study the grid now, you can find a variety of quite interesting pairs. So if we look, for example, at nines and sevens in relation to box two, nines and sevens can't go in those squares very simply but this little cell here can't contain a seven and a nine because of the swordfish so in fact those two squares are a seven nine pair and i think probably to keep it simple i'm going to color in cells that are limited like this so that i don't misunderstand that the, these sevens and nines are different from the swordfish notation i'm saying the gray gray cells must be the digits in the center of the cells. Um, now I think there's more we can do here because if we look, if you look very carefully here, you can see in row one, row six, column one and column six, there are a number of cells where the swordfish restriction is applying. So I want to, let's have a look at these in more detail. Let's look at row one in more detail. And I want to focus on the digits two, seven and nine. Where can 2, 7 and 9 go in row 1? Well, this square here, you can see from the swordfish, it can't be a 2 or a 7, and it can't be a 9 because of this cell. This cell can't be, this cell can't be a 2, 7 or a 9, just from the column. This cell is interesting. It can't be a 9 or 7 from the column, or a 2 because of the swordfish. This cell can be neither 2, 7 or 9 because of the swordfishes we found, and if we look here, there's a 279 in the column, and then look at this square. This square sees a 2 in column 7. It sees a 7 in its box, and there's a 9 pencil mark, meaning 9 cannot go in there because of the swordfish on the 9s. And there you go. All of a sudden, there are only three possible cells left in this row that could be the digits 2, 7, and 9. So those two cells need to be the ones in question. We can't put 9 into this square. We can't put seven into this square. And we can repeat this trick, I think, in column one and row six and column six as well. So let's try that and see if it works. Column one, that can't be two, seven or nine. That can't be two, seven or nine because there's a nine, seven in the row and a two in the box. Me a two, a two swordfish restriction. Um, this square sees two, seven, and nine in the row. This square sees seven in its box and two, nine in the swordfish. That sees two, seven, and nine. So that's it, we've done it. Look, these three squares here are the only ones that can be two, seven, and nine. So let's put it in. That one can't be nine. This one can't be seven. Let's do it for row six. That one can't be two, seven, or nine. That one can't be, that one can't be, see the swordfish. That one can't be the 2-7 swordfish. 7-9 here with the 2, 2-7-9 there. So those three 
are the key cells that we need in row six. And now this, this column as well. So again, that can't be two, seven or nine. That one can't be. So he's nine, seven in the row and two from the swordfish. That one can't be. That one can't be. See so seven, two swordfish, nine in the box. That one sees two, seven and nine. So this time it's those two as well. That have to be the two sevens and the nines. So that's two, seven, nine. This is two, seven, nine. That one can't be seven, look. And this one can't be nine. Now, I don't think when I solved it the other day, I got all of these, but I got some of them. But this is basically where I got stuck. Um, I couldn't spot the next thing for love nor money. Um, so do have a look. And if you spot it, well done, really well done, because I, I should have, I could have spotted it if I think if I'd not been using colors to try and record the swordfishes, because keeping track of all these squares, you know, what they can be when you're not using notation like this, this negative notation is really tricky. Um, but anyway, I didn't spot it. And the trick here is that we need to think about the digit eight of all things. These two eights are bizarrely restricted, uh, not in any particularly clear way, but there is, yes, you've guessed it, another swordfish. So let's, <laughs> let's go through the grid and work out where the digit eight can go and see if we can spot anything clever off the back of that. And it really is quite extraordinary, but we will be able to. Um, so eight, See, it's really interesting how these gray cells do restrict the other digits and allow us to make some progress. You see, there's so many places eight can go. It just doesn't look like a natural digit to check. It really doesn't. So all of those cells could, in theory, be eights. So what we have to do is we have to stare at this and try and spot a pattern. And the interesting thing about this, from the purpose of this, this puzzle as well, is that every swordfish we've found so far, we've been looking at columns, but this time we can look at rows. If we look at row one, row four, and row eight there, those cells, they form a swordfish in the rows. I.e., in these three rows, the digit eight is locked into a subset of exactly three columns of the grid. And therefore, we know that there must be exactly one eight in those two positions, exactly one eight in those three, exactly one eight in those three. So there are some squares here that are purple in these columns where we can do our familiar notation like that. And that shows us the effect of the swordfish on, on the eights and you may think ah oh, now we're about to get a digit no 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 we're nowhere near getting a digit yet nowhere near and I'm not joking we are nowhere near um, that can't be a nine I've just noticed that's two seven pair in that box um, that can't be a seven in fact that one uh, Oh, that can't be a two. <laughs> so there are now. So what's the next trick? Now this again, this took me a long time. It was it was the evening by the time I got to this point. Um, but I hope you'll forgive me for how long it took me to spot this next step, because I don't think it's that easy. And basically what I was reduced to at this stage was highlighting every single cell in the grid and working out what it could and couldn't be. Now, if you do that, you can find and it, maybe it's spotable this, that there is an interesting thing going along, going on in the bottom row. And I think the way to get at this is to notice you've got two, three, six in the row. And in some of these columns, there are some quite different digits going on. So what sort of restriction have we got going on in the open cells of row nine? Well, this square and this square are interesting because of the swordfish restricting Oh, well, meaning there's no eight in the yellow squares. So what actually are the options for this square? Well, it could be a one. It can't be two, three, four. It could be a five. It can't be six. It can't be seven, nine. And because of the swordfish, it can't be eight. So in fact, this square can only be one or five. This square 
this square can be one, it can't be two or three, it could be four, it can't be five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So this one is one or four. And I think it was this one was the other one. If we look at this cell, this cell can't, well, it can be one, it can't be two, three, it can be four, five, it can't be six, seven, nine, or eight because of the swordfish. And look, look at this. You get a one, four, five triple in the bottom row, which combined with the two, three, six means these squares are a seven, eight, nine triple. Oops, not a six, seven, eight triple, a seven, eight, nine triple. That can't be seven. That can't be nine because of what's in the box. We get some more gray cells. And look, you might think, now we're going to get a digit. No, 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 no. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're nowhere near getting a digit yet. Um, but that's, what was that? That's, um, we've had six, is it six swordfishes so far? And some quite difficult pairs and triples to find. Now, the next step is, it's not as difficult, I don't think, if you get to this point as some of the stuff that's gone before it. In fact, this bottom row I thought was incredibly hard. But if you look at the grid now, we've got so many of these cells that are restricted to being gray cells, that actually it's not that difficult to see what happens next. We, we need another swordfish, I kid you not, we need another swordfish. And this time, it's the swordfish on a digit that's not even appeared in the grid yet. There are no given ones. We've not got any ones pencil marked, but there is a swordfish on ones. So it might be a good time if you want to practice, do pause the video, see if you can spot where it is. Um, and look, it's in column two. Those are the only cells that could contain a one. Column five, those are the only cells that could contain a one. And column eight, those are the only cells that could contain a one. So here is a classic swordfish again. These three columns, we're restricting to exactly three rows, so we know there's going to be a one in exactly one of these three positions in row two, exactly one of these three in row five, and exactly one of these three in row seven. Now, because we have absolutely no ones in the grid at all, every single white cell that's affected uh, by these rows, we can restrict the one from. There's no need for um, clarification or extra coloring. We can simply go along these rows and eliminate or put the ones into all the white squares. So we end up with this situation. And you may think, ah, now we're there. No, no, we're not there yet. We still got to have a totally different technique. Well, it's a related technique. But now we need our old friend, the X-Wing, to help us out. And we, we can use the X-Wing off the back of these ones that we've just, uh, we've just managed to restrict. So if we study the grid now, you can see, if you, it's not that difficult to see this one, I think. If you look at column one and ask where one can go, given these swordfish restrictions, there's actually only two positions. And in column six, which is another of these columns that has had so much restriction applied to it by the swordfishes, the ones can only go in those two positions. So we end up with this situation. In column one and column six, the ones are locked into just two positions. This is why the X-Wing is sort of the smaller brother of the swordfish. It's the swordfish is one more dimension. It's the third dimension of the X-Wing. And let's think about what it means. It's much easier to see what the X-Wing on ones means. Let's, if we looked at the finished solution and there was a one in this cell, what would that mean? Well, if there was a one in this cell, where would the one go in column six? It can't go here, it would have to go here. So the ones would be on this slash of an X. And of course it would mean, if this was the situation, we could eliminate one from all of these yellow cells because there was, there's, there's a one in these rows already. Now what about if we looked at the finished solution and there wasn't a one in this position? Well then we know from column one, the one would have to go there because it can only go in one of two places. So in this situation, the one in column six must go here and it would be this slash of an X that has the ones in it. So there's always ones on one slash of the X in the X wing. That's just how it gets its name. But you can see that in both situations, it doesn't matter to us which way round the ones go. We don't care. 
we can always eliminate ones from all of the yellow squares and that is the key to the x-wing so what does that mean let's come back to it let's get rid of the highlighting actually oh no maybe i should do the pencil marks first get rid of ones from all of these squares and now we're finally in a position where we can enter a digit believe it or not get rid of the coloring so i'm sure one square might be standing out to you now and it's this one this square we've restricted the ones in it by x-wings the five six seven eight and nines by swordfishes there's a two three in the box so the only option for this square is a four and that might be about the hardest naked single you will ever see in the world of sudoku and it's our first digit after half an hour but that is how to logically get that first digit now believe it or not even once i got this first digit i found it very hard to finish this puzzle because if I remember rightly, we get a four there quite quickly, but it's quite hard to see, you know, what sort of restrictions are now applying in the grid. I'm trying to remember, in fact, what I did find next. I think, I think it's something bizarre like this cell because this cell, you can see, it can't be two, five, six, or seven because of the swordfishes, and it can't be eight or nine. So that's six digits ruled out, yes it is. So this cell can only be one, three, or four, and there's a four, three now in the column. So this is a very hard naked single again. This is a one, and that one was on the X-wing. So when we looked at columns one and column six, we knew the ones were either here and here, or here and here so this was a one by the x-wing logic um I, I got sorry i just got interrupted there by fight about two helicopters and a roll dial book um that's nothing to do with the arg <laughs> i promise you it's nothing to do with the arg anyway sorry where were we i was trying to work out what the next digit was here um it was um yeah there's there is some cells here that are more restricted than you might think. So where are those cells? We've got, that cell's got a lot of swordfish restrictions in it, look. We've got, uh, so what can that square be? That can be three. It can be, can it be four actually? Ah, it can be four. Can't be five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So that one is quite restricted. Let's change its color. And I remember this from last time. Basically, I had to go around the grid trying to find the restricted cells because it's not actually obvious where the where the cells are that are particularly restricted. Again, if you're using a computer, you can easily pick them off, but we're not using a computer. So, yeah, this square, I think, is... Yeah, what can this square be? It can't be 269 because of the swordfish. It can't be 134 because of the column. It can't be 5. It can't be 6 because of the swordfish. 7. Can't be 9. So this one is, is a naked single as well. That is an 8. Um, ah, so that gives us a bit of a Sudoku relationship look. That must be an 8 by Sudoku. Is that helpful? So now let's have a look at this. So eight, this eight here. Ah, look at this. Yeah, eight in the central box is locked into one of those two cells now because it can't can't go in any of those squares. Can't go on the two seven. So there's an eight in one of those two squares. So there's an eight in one of these two cells, which marries up, look, with where the eights are going uh, in box three. The eights are also in column seven and column nine. So there's an eight in one of those two cells. I don't actually think this is, I don't think this is the way to crack this. I can't remember. Um, so let's have another think about this and see if we can spot anything else that's helpful let's 
So eight has to be in one of those two cells. So maybe it's another. So what are the options for that square? Ah, yeah, yeah, remember this. This is this cell is really restricted. You can see it's almost restricted by Sudoku. It sees two, three, five, and six in those squares, four, seven, nine. So it has to be a one or an eight, and it can't be an eight because of these eights. So this is a one. Which means that's a one by Sudoku. That's a one by Sudoku. One now has to live in one of these two cells. So this becomes a one by Sudoku. And oh yeah, okay. And now look, look at these sixes. Sixes are forced into that square. So this square is a naked single now because I've got a triple in the column. So that must be a five. Where does five go in box two? It must go here. Where does five go in box five now? These fives force it to be here. This becomes an eight. That, oh, this, yeah, this is it. This is it. Now look, the eights. Um, in fact, let me just finish the fives first and then we'll come back to the eights. That must be a five. That's not a five. Therefore, this is a five, look. Five, five, there must be a five here now. Yeah, now come back to this eight. This eight sees the nine. Now, or this this pair. Now, once you get once you get the nine here, all of these grey cells around the grid suddenly unwind and it becomes at least tractable, I'm hoping. Nine, seven, nine, two. That's a two. That must be a seven. Um this one here must be an eight now. So we can delete that cell. We need to put an eight here by Sudoku. These two squares, I think we can start to get rid of the swordfish notation now, I'm hoping. Three must go here by Sudoku. This should be a six. Um, what do we need in that row? We still need a three. I can see that three and six again. Oh, well, okay, we can do that. Three and six. Six must go up there. Eight must go here by Sudoku. Eight must go here by Sudoku. Oh, don't make a mistake now, Simon. That would be an absolute travesty. Um, these two squares have got to be three and four. So let's put those in, which means that one must be a two. That must be a two by Sudoku. We need one, three, and four into those squares. So the four goes here, the one goes here, the three goes here, the three and the four get fixed, the four goes here, three goes here, and that should be a six, I think. That looks okay, doesn't it? Um, right, what do we need down here? That's got to be a nine. That's one of my grey cells. That's a six. That's a seven. That's another grey cell I could have just filled in a while ago. That should be a four, one, four. We still need a three in this box. We need a one in this box. And if I've not made an error, I need seven here, three here. And that is how, please say, yes, it does say it looks good to me. That is how to solve one of the hardest puzzles you will ever see. It's certainly one of the hardest classic Sudokus. And yes, it's taken me, well, quite a lot longer than it took Mark to solve using bifurcation. But... I think you will agree with me that this way is far more satisfying. I hope so. Do let me know in the comments. Uh, just uh, one more thing to do, which is, of course, that. And uh, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.